out the differences. Uh, we're seeing that against a backdrop of gridlock, of excessive partisanship, excessive ideological rigidity on the matters of the budget uh, and the deficit reduction and uh, what you're seeing played out in front of us is politics at its worst. Uh, and in the midst of all of that, here is this little bright shining moment of bipartisanship. And of course, I give great credit uh, to Mary Landrew, who was the initial spark plug. Uh, and she has a lot at stake in this. Uh, because Louisiana, uh, not just as a result of the Deepwater Horizon, uh, Louisiana has had its marshes uh, damaged over the years, of which there is a significant loss of that marsh, which will ultimately have its effect on the Gulf. Uh, Richard Shelby uh, was absolutely key. A Republican senator from Alabama, part of our, our Gulf Coast. Uh, and then when you think about it, you know, there are only five Gulf Coast states. And we started out having all of the Gulf Coast senators together. But think about it, that's just five. There are another 45 states. And so we had to get them involved as well, and to get them involved in a bipartisan way. And we found that key of how to do it uh, in the Senate, and then we had this extraordinary vote uh, where we took this bill, attached it onto the transportation bill, which was a must-pass bill, so we had a vehicle, uh, and passed the Restore Act as an amendment to the transportation bill with a vote of 76 to 22, which uh, you haven't seen a lot of votes around the Senate on a major piece of legislation. Now, you mentioned, one of you mentioned, I had not heard it described, and you said Ken Salazar uh, said it, but it's true. This is the the major environmental appropriation that we have ever seen. And that can be anywhere from what is expected of $5 billion all the way up to $21 or $22 billion. And the way that will be calculated will be determined by a federal judge now sitting as they are deciding in federal court in uh, New Orleans that according to the Oil Pollution Act, which was enacted decades ago in the aftermath of the Exxon Valdez in Alaska, that every barrel of oil that is spilled in a public waterway will have an assessed fine per barrel according to the culpability of the spiller. And that is a matter that is being uh, negotiated right now between uh, the U.S. government and BP. And failing some settlement, then it will go to trial, ultimately decided by the federal judge. Uh, and uh, if, for example, that fine is $1,000 per barrel, there were 5 million, almost 5 million barrels uh, spill in the Gulf, then that could be a $5 billion fine. However, if the judge decides that the malfeasance, misfeasance, culpability, etc., is greater and assesses a $4,000 per barrel fine, then you can see that can go upwards of $20 billion. So we're talking about some real money. Uh, and of course, what we wanted. The senators, and, and I give these other senators great credit, because this would not have been possible without them. Uh, what uh, we wanted was that this money not to go where somebody else can get their hands on it, but that the fine ought to come back to the people and the environment of the Gulf. And that's what this formula is up here with basically four pots of money. 
I won't go through each of those, but to tell you that, for example, the last pot there was mentioned to you, we will have in each of the five Gulf states set up a center of excellence, and I specifically tailored that so that it would go to the area that could really do the research on the long-term health effects of the Gulf, and that is the Florida Institute of Oceanography, which is a consortium of 20 public and private universities in this state, uh, joined by another seven associate members. Uh, and they have already been doing a lot of the research on the Gulf. And of course, if you've got five million barrels of oil sloshing around out there, they're going to be long-term effects. Uh, we don't know the effects way down at 5,000 feet where the spill occurred because we can't get down there to measure the effects. Uh, we do know, and for example, two LSU professors have been studying as one sample of the environment in the food chain, a small fish the size of a half a dollar called the killifish. And they root around in the sediment of the Gulf uh, in the marshes. And so they took samples of the killifish from uh, Barataria Bay, where a lot of the oil had come in. Uh, they compared them to the killifish in marshes in other bayous along the Gulf, and they found a distinct difference. They found the ones that were rooting around in the sediment with the oil were stunted. They did not reproduce normally. They had lesions. And then when they took cross-section slices of their gills compared to the other killifish, they saw what almost was like mutations. Now, that little fish is a part of the food chain. Let's also remember that we're not just talking about a definition of water in one part of the globe. This body of water affects so many of the oceans of the world because the critters that spawn often migrate. You see a number of these species right here. They migrate and they go out into the oceans of the world. And so we are talking about a major effect.